Hey, Daily Dosers, Chris here. Thanks so much for joining us. Look, I know many of you follow along with our weekend series. I know a lot of you don't. That's great. We just hope that you're enjoying these little five-minute Devo shots that we send you free every weekday. But we just finished here at North Coast doing like 25, 26 weeks in the book of Revelation, the very last book of the Bible. And this weekend, I tried to do way too much and fit way too much in with the very last one. But we were given this incredible last scene, the very last scene in the book where Jesus goes, look, you're gonna be ruling and reigning with me forever. I'm gonna come with my rewards and give to everyone according to what they have done here on earth. And, and so we looked at that very last scene as this life is simply a resume for the rest of our life. We use this um, rope illustration, I still have it with me today, talking about our life being only this much and our timeline runs on forever and ever. Are we willing to give up the end of the rope? Or we use James saying, your life is a mist, it's a vapor, it's here today, gone tomorrow. In other words, James says, look, you were born, you went to school, you met her, him, and then you died, and it's, it's, your life's gone. 60, 80, 90 years, but we're eternal beings. And we looked at Jesus' parable in Luke, saying, I've left each of my servants opportunity and trust, a certain amount of, of resources, and I'm going to come and see what you've done on my behalf. And you're each going to be rewarding according to what you've done. But the question comes out of the end of that book. And the question comes after that teaching then. So how do we do that? Do I still go back to my job today on Monday? Are some of you sitting at home going, maybe I'm not supposed to work. Maybe I don't go to my job. Maybe I quit everything. Do I just sit around today and just let God pick me up and move me where he wants to move me? How does that work? To take us into today's encouragement, let me take you back to the book of James where that missed concept comes from. In James chapter four, verse 13, he says this. Now listen. You who say today or tomorrow, we're gonna go to this city or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make a lot of money. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. So instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. But as it is, you boast and brag. All such boasting is evil. Anyone then who knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. Well, right off the bat, I'm left with a little bit more guilt. Well, don't all of us say, well, this is my job and this is what I make on the 15th and 30th and this is what I'm trying to, and we're not supposed to do that? We can't plan our life? We can't plan our career? That's not what James is saying at all. James is saying, you know what the difference between boasting and bragging? You know the difference between making life about you or the kingdom? Who gets to rule it? Who gets to reign it? He goes, instead, you just ought to say, God, is this your will? We love the salvation that comes from God. I think sometimes we fail to remember, though, that surrender comes before salvation. What does it look like to live a life that's submitted to God? What does it look like to take the life that you've been given and say, God, it's, it's yours for your kingdom, not just mine? Well, of course we go about our jobs. Of course we go about our day. But boasting and bragging or surrender determines who gets the decision-making the final say in that day. What is God's will? God's will is not rational. God's will is not we have to go here, do this, meet them. This is my degree. This is my major. This is who I'm supposed to marry. This is where I'm supposed to work. God's will is not rational. God's will is relational. In other words, God's will is where we are in Christ, not where we are in life. If God's will was rational, the moment someone married the wrong person, it messed it up for everyone. The moment someone took a job they weren't supposed to, it messed it up for everyone. God's will is where we are in Christ, not where we are in life. Because where we are in Christ, then he can do everything. That's why the Matthew 6, says, seek the things of the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all this will be taken care of and added as well. Because if God has you, then he truly has you. What's it look like to take today? Your job, your routine, the people that you're normally with and what you're called to do. And say, God, I don't want to boast and brag today. I don't want to pretend like I have this. This is my job. This is my doing. This is my kingdom. How do I surrender it? It's a simple prayer, and it's an act of the will. God, may today you use me for the purpose you have me here today. May you use all that I am and all of my resources, my personality, my wealth, my securities, my whatever, and God, whatever you bring in and out of my life today, may I honor you with what you have in front of me. See, if we are seeking God's will, then we're seeking God's presence. And if we're seeking God's presence, then he has all he needs to do his purpose in us. We're not going against his purpose because we're walking with him. May you seek purpose and presence today. That is God's will. And may you find you have a different purpose. 
for what he has in your life and what he's given you because he's calling the shots. You're not. We'll see you tomorrow.